God, Steve, that was crazy. <laughs> Thank you so much for your patience. <laughs> I've, I've actually been, and if this isn't where you want to go, that's fine, and you can edit this however you want, but I've actually been watching a lot about flat Earth. But the theory of flat Earth and, and the, the orb of Earth, they're, they're both the same. It's just the perception of the viewer. It truly, yeah, right. It truly is. Uh, yeah, is I see that. I see what you're saying there. And I felt exactly the same. I've That's why I can accept anyone that has a different perspective of, of reality, because it doesn't really matter in the end. Uh, if it gets them to where they need to go, that is enough. And what I'm leading to is that, you know, there's just more of the tricks of the division because they're just the reflection of our, our negative side, but we'll use the word cabal and they, they they're using all kinds of tricks on us to keep us divided. Even yeah. the you know, flat earthers, the spiritual community, we all know politics and religion is so, so much divide division. And that's what it's all about is bringing science, the science and religion all back together. The, the faith, of religion and the knowing of science has to mm. come together. And that's where that you find that zero point. And, and then that's what it is. And, and how, you know, just bringing information out to people and letting them decide for themselves what they want is if you want to use the word God is, is the perception of everything in infinity. So we've got, instead of dividing for the different views, to unite because we are so diverse and, 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 and there's, um, and I'm just, I, I was back to the flat earth thing. Yeah. I mean, it is, it is a great theory. It is a great, a great thing that these people have brought out. It's, it's a wonderful thing. It, it's, it's, it's shaking up, mind. it's shaking up reality. Um, and the way that they're doing is really like pushing the limits again. Um, so I see, I see through that. And also one of the biggest words that I've come to realize through all of this spiritual gain of wisdom and stuff is if I could say one word and that would help everybody would be acceptance. Acceptance is at the core of everything. Um, just letting others go on their own adventure and, and taking it how they need to to weave in and out of their reality to become more of uh, alignment of what they really desire. I mean, really, in the end, it's are we going towards what we desire or are we going towards more fear? That's more the question here rather than what do you believe and what do I believe? It, that doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Like, believe what you need to believe, but are you going, is your beliefs taking you to more restrictions and more fears and more, you know, like feeling terrible and belittling yourself? Then there's something going on wrong there. I would say maybe you need to look at that. But if it's opening you up to, be, to becoming more expansive and more loving within yourself, then yeah, you're going towards a direction that's conducive to what you desire. And isn't it, you know, if we're all at the core source energy, all source energy wants to do is to desire and go on adventure and create and, you know, and, and even within the destruction of something, it's still an adventure. It's still part of that. So, yeah, acceptance is a big thing. But, and I agree. And, and the only thing, you know, where that frustrates all of us are is is the forcing there there are there is there is a system out there that wants us to force is trying to force humanity into uh, a certain narrative a certain narrow-minded mind frame that is where i'm that's where we 
all have to stand up into our own uniqueness and say, no, I'm not, I'm not going down that road. It's this forcing that, that, that infuriates me. Do not force me to go against my divine unique self. And that's where we all have to, and then that's what's happening right now where we have to, we're learning to stand up in our divine mm -hmm. self, be our unique co-creators in this existence. And it, that's where, that's where my frustration is. That's mm -hmm. where my anger is. I, I, I don't want to use the word. Well, well yeah, it is. It, but yeah, We're learning to take our own reins. We're learning to, to um, see what we can achieve from our own divine self and what we want to create. And if we're constantly looking outside ourselves to leaders to guide us and all that sort of stuff, then, you know, as soon as we do that, we're touching on somebody else being more value, more and of more value than we are ourselves. And yet everybody in this, every human in this, or everything in this existence is divinely right to be who they uh, were born to express themselves. And uh, if it doesn't, like you say, resonate that reality doesn't resonate then they will find their own people to resonate with it's not if it's not conducent to yours then you all move in that's when you start to gather in, in a tribal kind of a manner with your other peers and that that resonate with you because you're being authentic to yourself they're being authentic you're not coming from a lack they're not coming from a lack you can start to create something brand new together because you're not looking at them to fill any sort of gap or anything where humanity has been on this massive journey of only coming from their lack feeling like because that's what the logic when the logical brain was just in in charge that's all it knew. It, it was like searching, grasping outside itself for someone to tell it what to do. So that's what happened in that last, uh, you know, whatever amount of years that we've just gone through um, and losing ourselves. But to find ourselves again, we have to also realize there's a spiritual self. There's a connection to something more than just our body that everything and that's why i think my guides took me to dr um what was her name jill bolt taylor she's a neurologist who had a um yeah a, like a brain hemorrhage on the left hemisphere so that means that went down as soon as she coming from a scientist she said she'll feel into what it actually feels like to have no left brain right um and as soon as that left brain locked like went down she only had the right hemisphere she started becoming everything she was expansive as she was everything because she's now connected back into source energy it's our logical brain that brings us into our body but we have to um realize that that's the shift we're going to we're not dismissing what we've learned we're accepting we're accepting more of who we are by connecting to our spiritual self we're accepting um, when I was in with Source Energy, when I was with there at that point, all I can remember, the blissful feeling, the utopia feeling that came with that was through acceptance of everything. That's what it was. Such a big word at the moment. It, it, and I, I agree it, with everything. And, you know, it's, it's hard for us as we're all coming out of this deep slumber of existence to because we've been so used to that savior mentality looking mm -hmm. like you said a minute ago that 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 savior figure outside of us we have to realize that that savior mentality the savior is within us all mm -hmm. we've we've been so adapt to looking outside ourselves like you were saying to to look for someone else to be the leader of us yeah, and validate and, and us. It, and yes, as we, as we are all waking, waking up to come out of it, be that leader. Don't be afraid to be that leader for that time period. But as you're leading, realize that you're only showing that individual to lead themselves. That's where so much throughout history 
whoever stepped into that role as the leader mentality, that ego took over and they, they become the, the, the enslaver. But, but they it, were coming from their own lack, see. They weren't coming from a balance that, within the a fullness within themselves that they are divinely coming from their heart to speak. They were coming from a, if I control that person over there, then I feel better about myself. So, it, and then that person was coming from a, if they control me, then I feel better about myself. I don't have to take the reins or responsibility. So both parties perpetrator meets victim created this warped sense of reality and we're stepping out of that now we, and also as we start to wake up to our divine rights of who we are some of us like for me for instance you know I'm stepping into something so profoundly different in other words taking on uh, the essence of I know my past before I was born. I know that I was connected to higher uh, higher beings and I'm bringing in inf new information which hasn't been done, you know, before. So when you step into that role, it's kind of like coming out of the cl spiritual closet. Um, you know, where you could say you're coming out of the closet if you were... Uh, a gay or something or somebody or bisexual or whatever uh, and then you're stepping in well that's exactly how it kind of feels with the spirit but we're stepping into our empowerment first before we come out of the closet it, yeah so there has this kind of uh, for me it's like I don't have any fear based around it because I've already stepped in my power but I do know that it's not going to resonate with everybody and so I have to be aware of um, the people that I allow in so it's it's very much invite only at the moment at the moment like it might change as we go along but the frequencies at the moment are you know someone could come in and say hi um, how are you and then I'll say yes or no whether I want them in rather than in my past I was more conducent to allow everyone in because I've got so much to share and they're not going to understand it and then I end up feeling bad about myself because they've projected their crap on me. And it's like I've come out of the closet and they've just gone smashed me to bits and then I have to carry all that burden. So now it's more conducent to coming into your power first. That's what the energy is. Then you step out through, through the empowerment of no fear, um, which I have, but that and, and then you have to have your boundaries up around you to allow only certain frequencies because you're now respecting, I'm respecting this essence that I am and I have to protect that essence of who I am as well. Yeah. Exactly. Because it's just like, you know, just like this flame right here. If I was shining it out in the dark, you would have a lot of moss and bugs coming mm -hmm. to the flame. And... And not that the people are bad that, that feed off their, because they've been so starved from the light, the positive energy, when they see someone who steps into the leadership role, they'll, they're attracted to it. And so they'll, they will feed off you. you. And, and, the, and again, I reiterate, they're not bad. It's just that star, it's, it's the analogy of the starving human who hasn't had had food and so yes you have to set that boundary and that that we're all learning we're all learning if i could write a book i could write a thousand page book of the fuck ups i've done through this journey <laughs> and that's what makes it amazing if i didn't fuck up every day how would i ever expand and learn something new and that's the problem with the ego I, ego i got a big ass ego <laughs> <laughs> and we don't want to let go of, man, I fucked up yesterday. Oh, I fu we don't want to let go of that. And I'm not saying, see, here's that balance part where uh, you don't want to automatically give up your truth. You, you, want to, you want to stand in there for a while and, and, if, and make sure it's expanded and, and someone else is sharing something with you that is better. It's a, it's a higher truth. It's, it's everything is balanced. Everything is finding that balance, like I was saying a minute ago, finding that balance. Mm. And don't 
Don't give up your energy, just like you said, Bobby. Put that put that shield around you. This is where I am. I'm happy right here in my box. Now, if you've got something better to make my box expand, I'm willing to hear it, but always be willing to hear it. Yeah. Yeah, we do have to listen to each other a lot more. That was the other thing that whenever we came from lack and ego and the old programming, it was all to do with more... You know, we're, if we speak loud enough, we feel good about ourselves. Um, but no one else is going to know better than me because that means that I'm shot down. Um, but really, it's more to do with allowing other people to come in with their experiences and their ways of looking at things to, sh and then you can say, oh, wow, that really expands, like you said, my horizons to something different. It's a different way of looking at it. We could do everything exactly the same, but is it coming from lack or is it coming from your own heart? It's got nothing to do with the actual what we're doing. It's got to do with where is it coming from? Like really most people that, that they're stepping into anything is coming from a lack. Um, and that's the old program because the lack comes from not actually having balance with your spiritual self, your soul connection, saying that you are a powerful being, that you can move through this life making all decisions heart-based from yourself um, and trusting that game, trusting where it's going to lead you. Uh, yeah. You know, a, le a leader to me in this new paradigm we're all leaders and we're all followers. We all have turn, turnabout, and we can see when someone knows more than we do in a certain subject. Like, for instance, if I wanted to learn how to be an electrician, then I would go to you, you know, and learn about that sort of stuff because I don't know and I need to be open and vulnerable enough to learn from you and trust that I'm, tr but I'm coming from my own heart of I, from my heart, trust Steve to teach me. Um, where I could go to somebody else that really doesn't know anything coming from their ego and I can feel that ego. I'm still going to someone to learn about electricity and stuff, but am I coming from trusting who I am or I'm just, just, you know, throwing myself out there for anyone to take advantage of me. Uh, there's, it's all comes back to your own trust of who you are and who you choose to come into your life. It's, n it's enough of this whole paradigm where people say, um, uh, I, you know, I met someone and I can't trust them um, and they, they did something really bad to me, rah, rah, rah. Well, you let them in to do something really bad to you. You let them in for you not to trust them in the first place. When you're coming from the wholeness of who you are, you would already get a sense because you're already whole and you would feel their lack. If you're coming from a lack, then you won't feel their lack <laughs> and you allow them in and then they trot all over you. If you're coming from your hole, like you trust yourself 100% and who you're going to allow coming in because you you know how powerful you are, then they end up they end up not even being able to come up, you know, near you. Like for instance, my past gone, you know, all my issues that I had, um, I let on a lot of narcissistic uh, partners. Well, if someone came to me now that was narcissism, I would <laughs> see through that so easily just because I took my power back. Got nothing to do with anything else than me taking my power back. Now I trust myself. Now I trust the next partner that I'll, that'll come into my reality. But it's been a, a blimmin' long journey to get there. That, that's, that's, that's a good statement there because it's been a blooming long journey because... Uh, I've, I've been an impatient soul and, and, <laughs> you know, we, you know, spirit brought us together. Well, I'll say spirit, you know, what, how's the phrase go? Uh, the teacher will find the student and you know, what I'm trying to say there. So we're always, and, and everybody's the teacher and the student. We're always learning. I'm learning from you. You're learning from me everywhere we go. We're learning from each other and we, we have to accept that. And, and I've been very impatient and, you know, I'm not going to get into when I started to awaken as, as the word, as the coin phrase is, and, mm -hmm. uh, 
uh, coming out of the matrix, but it, it's been a magnificent journey. And I, I have an understanding of, of how great we can be, but it's in my frustration is it just seems to me like people, people's not standing up enough. And, and I guess spirits talking to me that we need to start being the example. And that's the, that's the fear. And, and, uh, and I've, with talking with you, Bobby, we're, we're afraid, just like I'm on here. This is, this is totally out of my, my frame <laughs> of life being on here, but spirits, Steve, you've got somebody, somebody, some people, I don't want to say body. I'm not special. Somebody has to be the first person on the dance floor. Mm. You know? There has to be that individual. So uh, what I'm saying is when we all start to stand up and, and recognize that I, I, Steve Allison, am the great I am. Bobby Richardson is the great I am. The people who are listening to this are the great I am. But for whatever, for whatever reason, I've really got deep into quantum physics and, and astrophysics and, and learning to the true nature of life. And, and here's the important thing. Everything I say, and I, this is my disclaimer, what I'm telling you is not the truth. It's just my slice of the truth. Hmm. Bobby has her slice of the truth. But everything I speak, I speak as, as what's, what, how I see it, how, how my yeah. experience, this is my experience. And I will never speak in a word, in a way to, to lead someone astray. And that has been my downfall in my fear throughout this journey over these past few years to be afraid to speak up because I don't want to lead someone astray. Yeah, that's, that was my biggest, to. my biggest sticky point as well is that if I speak up and then I'm leading someone down, uh, yeah, I, that was my biggest fear as well. But then I realized um, if I'm coming from my heart, that is enough. And I, because I know I'm coming from my heart in that moment, then that is enough. How they perceive it, how they take it, how they handle it is their own right to to what they want to create. Um, so that's why it's important when you do this kind of work to always come from who you are and your own you know your own heart speaking rather than um, you know trying to force someone into a corner because then we're going back to the old you know, way, you know, they could take me in a totally different way than what I'm trying to put across, but then that leads them to a lesson that they really generally needed for them to be able to go into the next part of their journey. And that's important because, so it might, it's an intention that we have first. What's our intention? I always set up my intention before doing readings or anything like that. This that clarity comes in and that it's for the benefit of everyone around me. That's not just for the benefit of me and my ego. It's for the benefit of everyone around me. And that that purity of me coming from that means that whatever I speak is in alignment with that person to take from it what they need. And that's helped me step into my power more because I'm... I'm coming from my heart only. Um, I've never, like, if I ever said anything that come from my own ego, I will jump on myself <laughs> before anyone else even does and say, well, that's actually my own ego speaking. And I've probably said it a couple of times, you know, don't listen to that bit. That's just me speaking my own mind or whatever. I'm not afraid. You can't be afraid to say that sort of thing um, because we are both. We are like ego as well as uh but i do get my mind i've learned they've taught me how to get my mind out of the way a lot more these days so that i can be you know speaking from my heart we have all we have all been gifted identity you know we're all one source consciousness but we've all been gifted that fractal of personality and as information comes in, you're going to, you're going to, uh, 
you're going to decipher that information through what your personality is and what has created your person, what, what, what has made your personality is not just this lifetime, all the events and experiences in this lifetime, yeah. but in every lifetime that we don't remember that are still going on right now. And that's, that's really, that's a mind blower, but they're all still <laughs> going on right now too. We won't go down that rabbit hole. We'll no, it's a good rabbit hole, really, because because that that means that the clearer I've become, well, I know that the clearer I've become, the more expansive I am, because that means that I can tap into even past lives, bring in energies from those lives. That's the reason why I could do stepping through a portal into that, um, go through those feelings and those imageries and wisdom. Um, but if I'm still coming, if I was bef like before, if I tried to do this coming from my own lap, only holding on to this life, all the issues that I've had, I'd just be pouring out all of the problems and putting projecting them onto somebody else. That's why I think I needed to wait until I felt very, I'm, I'm really aware of the more clear I am in myself and knowing who I am, the more I can then help heal others. Uh, I don't like, uh, I've never gone to a healer that hasn't healed. Like I don't very often go to healers, but if I ever did, it would be someone who's already healed that part in them. My guides led me to a experiment that someone did scientifically where they shone a frog embryo, uh, frog embryo, a salamander embryo through a frog or frog embryo through a salamander and it turned the salamander into a frog. Like they shone this light through, this energy through the embryo of one to another and it, it morphed it into that that um, frog. This is like, I'm talking years and years and years ago. I don't even know if I could find the scientific experiment anymore um, to tell you the truth. But when that happened, I went, holy crap, this is them showing me that it's our energy. It's, it's uh, the more we stand in our own sovereignty and our own purity of who we are and we clear as much as we can, I'm not saying we're perfect, then we can help guide others. So that was why it was important for me to go through all as much shadow work as I possibly could so that I could do this, what I'm doing here now and, ha and help guide others to be able to wake them up to their empowerment. I want them to be, everyone to be empowered within their own right. Yeah. That's, that's a good point. You've then led a segue into something else, but, and this is from my own experience. We, we, we're not in this journey alone. We have we have help all around us. You know, ain't you want to call them <laughs> angels, gal galactic beings, whatever, God, source, energy, however you want to do it. But the whole thing is you've got to ask for help. And they on the other side are they want to help you know they live vicariously through our experiences too and that's hard to wrap their head around that's that difficult to wrap their heads around but they live vicariously through us too not that they're ha not having their own experiences but when when i've always been down really down on on myself i ask for help from a spirit guide that's the whole thing you have but you have to ask you have to ask them because that's the whole hmm. the, the free will thing. They, they cannot do that. Yeah. So don't ever be afraid to ask each morning. And I don't I'm not saying I always listen, but each morning that, <laughs> that's my prayer. I ask for help. And of course, I was raised in the Christian faith. And I think Jesus is one of the most badass badass characters that's <laughs> ever lived on Earth. So Jesus is my brother. So I asked for help from Jesus. You know, if he was wherever part of the world, it might be Buddha, it might be Muhammad or whatever. But I love Jesus. So I asked him for help. And I tell you what, I get the goosebumps over my body when when I when you truly asking for intention mm. of help. It, it, it doesn't matter what word or terminology you use as long as you're asking for help. Mm. And in our human mind, it's hard for us to wrap that idea around how that all works. Mm. Don't try to just know it works and that you have to ask for help. Yeah, that's been the biggest shifts in my life 
when I've had like vision after vision after vi- like waking up in the middle of the night and seeing this, that and the other thing, hearing things and I'm like, oh my God, I'm going, you know, this is way too much. I need help. As soon as I said I need help, they said, well, it, um, they started to work with me. They said to me, if you, I said I wanted, instead of all of this coming at me and me trying to figure out which bits I need to learn from which bits uh, somebody's trying to grasp at me to get their attention. You know, I was trying to figure it all out because I had dead people coming and then I had UFOs coming and then I had the elementals coming and and you name it. My nights were extremely, extremely busy. But when I took the reins to that and said, I only want a couple of guides now. I don't want all of this because it's too much. they said you have to ask the questions so that was the other thing is to ask what you just said ask for help so i had to ask a specific question of what i wanted and i wanted to meet somebody of high integrity in a human body that could help me and that's when i got led to in the next few months to an amazing cherokee elder and then i also asked for I said, well, if you're asking me for a question, I just went randomly, what's the true history of humanity? And that took me on a 10 year journey with visitations from four different species. Um, And then I shifted it in the middle of all of that to what's the potential of humanity. So it is really what questions are you asking too? you know, you're just asking the simple basic day-to-day questions that keep you in a loop of still smallness or are you asking for the bigger questions of what's my potential where could i go you know how how does telepathy work you know these questions we need to ask them as well that's important too to step into that new energy um, and take advantage of it yep most definitely And, and the rabbit holes never end i mean it's infinite Mm -hmm. so don't and and i'm speaking to myself as i say this don't go down too deep where you where you lower your your vibration your where you come into a a state of depression or fear or something else don't we have to learn you have to let go you have you have to be in it has to be a process of Whenever I've asked a question, like for instance, what's the true history of humanity? I did not think that it was going to be a four, a, a four being 10 year exercise, 10 years it took for that information because each visitation that I had told me their perception of history or gave me the feelings of their perception of history because they all had different perceptions, right? So what is the truth? Well, I had to have four different kind of beings coming to me and I didn't realize it was going to take 10 years, you know, so we have to let go. I didn't even realize till about eight years in, I'm like, hang on a sec, that's that question that I asked. You know, I literally had let it go, not realizing the answer was still coming to me um, until the end, when at the end, the very last uh, species, the Lyrans that came, that just summed it all up and made me realize that I had actually been given, gifted the answer to that. It wasn't like an elaborate, elaborate answer, but it was enough for me to suffice on what the true history of humanity was for my own self. Um, Yeah, so we have to let go of the expectations, which is what we uh, have been taught by logic that everything's instantaneously because there's only one answer. And so that's all that there, you know, you can get given that like that. But that's not how life really generally works. That's just the logic trying to make sense of uh, its reality in this moment to be feeling good about itself and infuse some sort of chemical reaction through our body to feel good. Um, so it, uh, it latches on to one answer, right? Um, because that's what we've been taught. But the, the answer is not always just as simple or basic as one answer is the only truth. There's a lot of different, yeah, life isn't is a lot more colorful though it's a lot more expansive and a lot more wisdom can come into you when you allow the answer to present itself rather than just uh look for one specific avenue of how it has to look or unfold yeah yeah i i just 
I just go in, like I say again, it's infinite. You'll never stop peeling the onion. You'll <laughs> never stop eating at the <laughs> smorgasbord of infinite knowledge. Go in as deep as you want, as deep as you want to, and come back out and digest that. Digest the, that's why I say, digest the information. And that's truly what you're doing. You're allowing that information, those, that codes or however words you want to say, to infiltrate throughout your whole body, digest. Yeah. And, and, the, then, and the thing I've noticed, in. sorry, Steve, and the thing I noticed the most when I was, ex when I'm expanding, especially being in line with the Palladian energy at the moment is it's, the story can be whatever. I understand that because that's the outside adventure that we're creating. But it's the feelings, the feelings that we're really going for. They're the juicy things. Because if you can hold your, ha have a life where you feel euphoric and good about everything that you're doing, that is the level, that's the base, and you're only rising from there, um, then, then your life is set as, uh, already set as, um, oh, they're giving me the word royalty and I don't really want to use that word, um, set as being sovereign within yourself uh, so that you are, you're already holding your life in conducent manner to what you really want to, um, want to express and be. Uh, it's the feelings that we're going for. So you could you could become a millionaire and still feel crap, and you're one, and then you got you're, you're floundering around trying to figure out why, and so your whole life ends up being that, and it's still in. But if you were poor and you felt really good about yourself and felt euphoric all the time and really happy, then you don't need for anything else. You're already feeling conducently happy. But of course, we ha do have a body and we do need to take care of it. So that's the other thing that I learned is I constantly said, I just want to be happy. I don't care if I'm poor. Then I ended up being poor all the time and I realized the poorness was actually making me unhappy because I was stressing out about my bills and stressing out about not having enough food. You know, sometimes I only had one dollar in my for the for the next week this is years ago um and it stressed me out so i wasn't happy so i realized there has to be a collaboration of both allowing the outside to reflect the inside that you're you then you're really in that true abundance and that feeling that you hold because since I, because since i started tapping in with the palladian energy and doing this video um, the greatest thing started happening is all of the things that I was thinking I needed to grasp at to make me happy were starting to fall away because I was already sitting in the energy that I was wanting to become through the, through, through the um, connection with them. They had already gifted me the feeling that I was searching for where my mind was thinking I would be able to be gifted that through say for instance the right partner or you know a lot lot more money or my own home and 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 i mean that's all good and there's nothing wrong with that but it was interesting how it started falling away from me it wasn't as important anymore the feeling was already within me and that is an absolute gift and a half so it's one thing i was hoping to share with others that it really is the feelings that we're going for here and how we feel about our life and ourselves. Yeah, exactly. And, and something that before we get off here, something I really need to I would like to share from my experiences. I'm sure everybody else is going through the whole thing. Is you know we are going through a, an intense energy shift on the earth right now. Mm. You know, we're stirring up everything it's stirring up all the emotions that we've been taught for however long you're not supposed to feel you're not supposed to cry you're not supposed to do this or that feel it go ahead and feel it it's okay to feel crappy but realize on the on, on the upscale because that's what life is you're constantly that vibratory field that we live in there's always the upside. Realize if you're down low, you know, if you're feeling down low, something good, good is coming. Don't allow yourself to stay in that low vibratory field because you could actually drop down a, an octave of vibration, I guess. But even then, it's okay. But 
just realize that there is so much going on in the world. And as things are going on, there's events that are going to continue to play out. I'm not going to label anything. We've all been through these two years of horse shit is the way I look at it, but it's been good. It's a good horse shit, but, but it's time we all stand up and realize that you are a unique divine co-creator or creator being, however you want to say it. And, mm -hmm. and everything is going to be perfect. And to stand up in your divine power, stand up. You have no one, no one has authority over you. No government, you are government. No anything has authority in that high vibratory field. Do the right thing. Feel your moral compass from your heart and do the right thing. Are you going to fuck up? Yes, every day. But realize every day is a new day. Every moment is a new moment. And don't allow, allow what you did that maybe felt made you feel guilty yesterday or the moment before. Don't allow that to dictate your next now moment. Mm. Yes. Because you are a magnificent mm. being. And it's yeah. time we all stand up. It's time we stand up. Yeah, it is to do with living in the moment is the big deal. Um, and also emotions can be the steering wheel through this. Like if you do feel a crappy emotion, then if you do feel into it, I felt then I can get a sense of a bearing of where I was feeling lack within myself. And so you can utilize those not so good feelings to see where you have been blocked. And then when you get to the crux of where that is, uh, it doesn't come up as much. And that's what I'm noticing now as well is that my life is still doing this, but it's like the, the, the lower level is rising. There's not... I don't have the anger that I used to have years and years ago. I don't have the guilt that I used to have years and years ago. I don't, I don't hold on to things anymore. And so it's like I've just risen my lower frequency blockages up further and to the point now where um, I'm very, very happy with who I am in my own inner self. And that's more important to get to and then you can start to allow even more in. You don't realize how much more you can let in until you start to to lower that base base emotion and clear and the unblockages using the using the emotions to unblock them. Um, then you start allowing even more expansion and more delight, more great feelings coming in. You don't realize like. The closest I can get is to being high and just living in that high space, but you don't have the the um, the warped feelings that go with it, right? So that's because it's taken from the outside in and kind of pushed onto you. You are living and embracing that euphoric feeling a lot more. I, that's what I'm finding anyway. And sometimes it's just nothing. Sometimes I just feel quite meh, you know, whatever. It doesn't matter. Um, because I know that a good feeling is going to come around the corner anyway. And all I have to do is imagine, use my imagination for the benefit of me and click into either uh, how beautiful Gaia is, Earth is, the flower is, the stars are, you know, the fire is, or even the Palladian energy, click into them and whatever I want to do. Um, and it ends up becoming more and you be, get more wisdom with it. Thank you so much for coming on board and till next time, adios. <laughs>